Hi guys, you're back here with me, Jen the Taxidermy Witch, and uh, we're continuing the chapter in this book, Fairy Craft, on how to honor the fairies, and in particular, I'm talking about how I'm going to bring it into this dollhouse and make a permanent indoor fairy shrine out of my lovely little dollhouse <clears throat> that I just can't seem to get rid of because it's handmade, it's wood, it's was made with love and intent. Like the moment that I got it, I could feel how powerful it was. Whoever made it would just put so much into it. Um, so right now, if you watch the video before this, we've talked about how to set that up, how to dedicate it. Then we talked about in the next video, we talked about what you could use for a proper offering, both indoor and outdoor. How to take care of your offerings, how to dispose of them. That's the video before this. In this video, we are talking about <clears throat> things to avoid. Things that the fairies, like, shouldn't have in their offerings, okay? So, things to avoid. Number one is glitter. And I see a lot of people offering this. Um, and I don't use glitter because of the mess that it makes on me personally. And I can't get over the feeling. And sometimes it can cut you and all that. And if you're like a clean person and you like to tidy, it's really hard to clean up. Um, and think about like, if you could do an indoor offering, that's great if you can clean it up. But an outdoor offering with glitter, which is most of your fairy offerings will probably be outdoors because that is the realm or the their domain that they take care of, <clears throat> that they represent. So I'm just going to read what she said here. Um, glitter is fine in its proper place on your face. <laughs> As most glitter is made from tiny bits of aluminum, plastic, and glass, leaving it uh, out in nature is not only littering but very damaging to any wildlife that may ingest it. Those little bits can shard up their insides, you know? <clears throat> or can just stay and linger around in there and get caught. Edible glitter is biodegradable alternative that should always be used when making children's bottles of fairy dust as they will inadvertently want to pour it on flowers or plants. So apparently there's some biodegradable glitter. Look into that if it's something you're really attached to and really feel that you want to have. Um, the next thing, and I already talked about this, avoid chocolate at all costs unless you have an indoor offering where no pets can get to it. My pets are generally not allowed in this space unless they're on my lap. They're not allowed to like prowl around and look. They're not allowed to get in into anything because it's as precious in here as like if a baby was in here, it'd be just so like, Err! that's how it is for a cat. Um, it's dangerous, super dangerous for babies and cats. <laughs> so <clears throat> chocolate. Many well-meaning people leave chocolate as an offering out in nature and even some so-called authorities on the subject recommend it. You must not under any circumstances leave chocolate out in your garden or anywhere out in nature. Period! Exclamation point. Um, because of the high amount of theobromine it contains. I hope I pronounced that right. Chocolate is extremely toxic to most animals, sometimes even deadly. I'm sure you can understand why it would be a highly inappropriate offering. Make sure you leave it out of any baked goods that you leave as offerings as well. Another thing to avoid are leftovers. The Fae don't want what's left over. They want the best, the start of it. They want it to be made for them particularly if you can do so. Um, <clears throat> when leaving food or drink out for the fairies, it must always have been specially made for them or be the first and best portion. If necessary, if necessary, it can be put to one side to be left out for them later, giving them what is left, uh, giving them what is left over after you have eaten or drinking from it is not an offering. It's a sign of disrespect. The same applies to any offering given because it's something that you no longer have or have a need for, right? Um... Next thing to avoid is the neglected shrine. If you are going to have a shrine, either in your dwelling place <clears throat> or preferably in your garden, it should always be kept clear. Uh, clear of clutter, clear of debris. Food offering, if clear of anything that doesn't belong. 
Food offerings should always be cleared the next day, as described earlier. We talked in the previous video about only leaving it out one night. In the morning, take it away, because it will start to collect negativity, and it will start to collect misinterpretation from the fairies, and you don't want that. If you put it out for one night and got all that luck from the offering, and it left it out for six days with negativity, it's, you know, like, just do it the next morning. Tidy it up. <clears throat> so, um, neglected shrines attract negative energy and mischief, the bad kind, okay? So the fairies will prompt up in your life with mischief and tell you, like, hey, what are you doing for us, you know? Where's that promise you made me? And if you make them a promise, pfft, better stick to it. I got within four minutes last Monday of breaking a promise to them, and it was terrifying. I was scrambling. You know what I'm saying? Like, running. And uh, I ended up just <clears throat> writing them a vigil candle in four minutes with, with love, and I believe in fairies, and all this stuff all over it. And then decided, pfft, Next week, I'm going to have something killer made, so I'm taking this weekend to make this shrine. Okay, uh, the next thing that you don't, that you want to avoid, <clears throat> crystals, kind of. Um, crystals are actually fine in your own space, either in your home or your garden shrine. It is recommended to check out your supplier to make sure they have been mined ethically. And that's going to be something that over time you'll be able to feel when you go to a metaphysical shop and there's a bunch and the person has no idea how they were mined or whatever. Or they came from Amazon and you have no idea how they were mined. <clears throat> Over time you'll be able to um, feel. So, uh, ethically mined and... Also, <laughs> there's an unfortunate trend in modern times to leave crystals or even bury crystals at sacred sites. This, of course, um, well-meaning, but not, but it interferes with the natural energy network of such sites, and as such is not advised as an appropriate offering. Sometimes a simple pebble charge with your own energy might be accepted in the spirit's place. Um, and the next when we come back, we're going to talk about timing and suggested activities. So that is, in a short bit, what not to do for your fey offering. Okay, come back with me, John the Taxidermy Witch. All my love.